Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow right now down 146. You get the NASDAQ off 52. S&P's off uh, 12. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Steve Rose, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, the way they get is Steve's newsletter, you come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to go right under newsletters. You're going to see Mastering Probability right there. You can hit subscribe. You can get Steve's newsletter for one month for $149. You can get it for six months at $695, which is a savings of $199 at 22%. You can get it for a year for $1195, a savings of $593 or 33%. They all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. You get everything to gain, zero to lose. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Preparations for New Year's Eve. Looks like uh, you and I are going to be fortunate enough to have just some beautiful weather on New Year's Day. In, in the 70s, sunny, uh, sounds like a good way to start the new, to, the new year to me. There's no doubt, man. There's no doubt. This is, this is when Florida, folks, for the next four to five, well, the next five months to six months is the ultimate. There's no doubt. And, and you know, yes, you know, bottom line, we see all the snow across the country just Jump on the plane and come on down. That's the bottom exactly. line. Exactly. Yeah. You betcha. You yeah. betcha. Hey, I heard you talking about the U.S. dollar before. Yes. And I, ha I happen to have pulled this chart up because uh, uh, one of the listeners uh, this afternoon to the show was asking about currencies. And, and so I, I didn't have enough time and said I would start uh, preparing some, some information for listeners tomorrow. Cool. Uh, but since you were just mentioning the U.S. dollar index, I have one of the charts up. Uh, that I like to take a look at. And this here uh, shows the horizontal trading ranges. So in honor of Bud Rolf, he's the one that taught us about these horizontal trading ranges. I automated that portion of the uh, tool on my system. And what we're looking at is a weekly chart for the continuous contract for the Dow. It goes back 33 years, so we're back in 1986. Yeah. And uh, these green lines uh, show us these horizontal uh, ranges that price can trade uh, within. And uh, so over the course of the last 33 years on a weekly basis, uh, the the level on a closing basis, the, the area that has the largest number of opens or closes is $96.72. And we're trading right around 96 42 uh, right now. So prices, and so there's been 89 opens or closes, um, and we'll see we'll see whether or not this year it's a magnet to that level. If price closes clearly below this, and there's a little rising trend line out here where I would think that the U.S. dollar would pull back to, potentially pull back to, and that's around 92-ish type range. But right now it's sitting here right at support. So it, since you had just mentioned it, I said, then I happened to nice. have it up. I figured, hey, we'd, we'd go take a look at it. But Perfect. 2018, uh, was a great year for me because uh, it was recognized as the timer of the year. Yes. As you know, uh, the nice thing is, is this has not been a one-hit wonder. So the uh, uh, the Tiber Digest information came out on Saturday. Uh, I'm still in the number one slot through December 28th, but that's subject to change over the next couple of days. That's out awesome, here. Steve. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, 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 I love it. Yeah, the market actually selling off today, and if it does sell off tomorrow, because I'm not changing well, my bullish yeah, right. outlook, I, I could drop a, a place or so. Oh, I see, because you are you're neutral, now you're by. I got it, okay, I, I got I, it. I, I, yeah. yeah, and and so you know it's a day by day, but but yeah. here's the thing, you know this is from the report that came out Saturday. I'm still in that number one slot, uh, and so the good news is is in, and it's been basically for about a two and a half year period of time. Jeez. So what's great is that the tools you know that I'm using, some of which were taught by you and Larry, Bud, we just took a look at one sure. of his tools, you know, have all assisted me. So we know 2019 has been the year of the bull worldwide, and we know that because I can go back here and take a look at from the beginning of the year, in essence, the last 12 months, take a look at uh, different markets and how each of those markets have traded in different currencies. So I take a look at how the Dow is traded in, in U.S. dollars, in euros, yen, in pounds. Everything is spelled out right here. But in 2019, it's been the year of the bull market everywhere, whether it, some markets or areas better than others. In fact, uh, the DAX in U.S. dollars has performed better than the uh, U.S. Uh, Dow has. 
Uh, so it's so what the point of this is that right now there's money that's flowing in to all markets across the uh, globe out there. And that's really important versus if we go back to 2009 and we take a look at the last 43 quarters, the U.S. has been the big winner, gigantic winner. It, it, in fact, the Dow in, in, uh, in euros is up 522 percent versus the Dow in uh, or the FTSE in euros or the DAX in euros you know, 120 percent or 282 percent. So there has been a, there has been since 2009 a big concentration of uh, focus into the U.S. But in 2019, that's not the case. And that's important for me in trying to analyze what may uh, unfold here in the markets. And it's important, I think, for folks to understand the global flow of capital because everything is connected. And the slightest change in any area can just simply set up a ripple effect. And if there's not a concentration of cash coming into one market, place, then that ripple effect can extend to all markets out there. And I think that's really important for folks to understand. This here is an example, uh, something near and dear to your heart. Here is a chart of uh, gold. And if we take a look at gold moving into the 2011 top, these are the green arrows. And these show gold priced in U.S. dollars, euros, then yen, and then pounds out here. You can see that when any instrument is moving, you want it moving in the same direction in all currency pairs out here. That way, somebody was trading gold that's sitting in London or sitting in Paris or sitting um, in uh, Tokyo, you know, everybody, you want everybody on the same page out here. And so that's really important to take a look at because world capital is, is simply going to continue to flow between countries, whether it's Europe, North America, Asia, or different markets, whether it's real estate, stocks, bonds, or commodities out there. And so the real question is, will 2020 be the year of the bear? And for me, the market will decide uh, for us because I use a very set of uh, specific patterns and tools that I, I uh, uh, which include include using bullish and bearish reversal signals to confirm patterns such as the A to B equals CD pattern. This set of charts here, Tom, takes a look at um, the major markets across the globe through using the ETFs that are out there so folks at home can do the same thing. So we've got the Dow in the upper left-hand corner. I've got the emerging markets lower right. And in between that, you've got Japan and Germany and China, uh, India, and so forth. And no market has broken out. Even though there's been a bull market, as we took a look at across the uh, world, no market has broken out other than the Dow above its 2018 highs. Those are the uh, red lines across there. So we also have kind of a consolidation, in essence, going on across the globe. And the Dow, you mentioned the Dow has been one-way market since that October 4th level. That's where the Dow was testing a uh, breakout level. It's a Tom DeMarc uh, sequential, or uh, Tom DeMarc uh, uh, TD9 setup uh, uh, a breakout uh, level out here, and uh, so that was a, and that's important for folks to understand key levels of support out here. Uh, since that bottom, the global flow of capital still is uh, is kind of equal. So there's not one area of concentration, and the reason that is important is because we're going into the seasonal cycle. We anticipate some type of top in January. This chart here says it should be around January 6. I don't hold it to the date. I'll look for a pattern that's, to confirm that. That's interesting because that, that's Monday. <laughs> it, it is. It is next Monday, yeah. suggesting the market moves lower into the end of the month. That's the normal cycle. The problem is I've got all of these different topping signals for all types of time frames, for indices, for sectors in the S&P 5. Even the yearly chart is showing a topping signal pattern uh, for me. So, folks, uh, what I want you to do is stay tuned to Tom. Stay tuned to all of the shows out here uh, because uh, even though I'm anticipating that 2020 could be the year of the bear, I'm going to wait for the market to approve itself to me. So I want everybody to have a happy new year. Uh, and uh, we'll be back in 2020. That's a beautiful thing. And folks, just go to our website at TFNN. You go to newsletters, you'll see Master and Probability right there. Steve, have a great one, safe one. Of course, look forward to the show tomorrow. And Happy New Year, man. Let's make Thanks, it a great Tom. 2020.